So I just had my interview with JC, also known as Lady Carnivory. And to me, this was such a heartwarming success story because JC is a friend of mine. Um, and I got a little bit emotional, not going to lie. I was tearing up a little bit in the interview, uh, but it is what it is. And hope you guys will enjoy this. Uh, before we get into that, JC is actually going to be coming into our new gut brain healing community and talking about how brain retraining was so vital to her success in overcoming SIRS. Um, so she'll be coming on uh, March 21st at 7.30 p.m. as a guest host into our community. Now, if you guys aren't familiar, this is a totally free month for everybody. Um, so if you guys are looking to heal your gut and your brain, this is the community for you. We have five classes a week. We have an awesome supportive community. I'm going to link everything down below, and we'll get into the interview with JC. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys. So, JC, how are you feeling today? I am well. Thank you for having me on, Scott. It's always a pleasure to be here. Good. And so I really want to find out what you've been doing lately because I see this night and day change in you. Something has been working in your life recently. And I think everybody wants to know what happened, what changed, what did you do to heal? So I know that we had an interview a few months ago about SIRS mm -hmm. and you're working on that. Can you take us from there? So what, how did this all start? What happened? Yeah. So backing up a little bit, um, in 2020, I went carnivore and that was incredible for me. I had a lot of health benefits from that, but then about a year and a half into my carnivore journey, I got really sick. Like I started having all these autoimmune symptoms, extreme joint pain, eye inflammation, plantar fasciitis, GI issues, just like all over the place. And it was over a couple of months that I just became catastrophically ill. And so I started looking into different things. I tried a lot of different things. I tried no salt. I tried lion diet. I tried an iodine protocol. You know, when you're not feeling well, it's like you're really open to trying new things to feel better. And eventually Nutrition with Judy reached out to me and she was like, I think you might have this thing called SIRS. SIRS is chronic inflammatory response syndrome. And it happens when someone who is genetically predisposed to being really bad at eliminating a biotoxin encounters that biotoxin. So for me, it was a combination of mold and also the, the C word. I'm not sure how we feel about saying that. Um, like as in you, you got it or you had the stuff in you. Um, <laughs> kind of both. So oh, I, yeah. I got it, but I was also exposed to people that had the stuff in them. So if you think, believe in shedding, um, I think that may have contributed to what I was experiencing. And, um, I went down this SIRS rabbit hole and I, I think anyone who has had chronic health issues can relate to this a lot. It's like you start losing hope every time you're like pitched a new solution. It's just like, Oh, now I got to spend like however much. Cause I was like, I cannot live with this amount of pain anymore. Like I, I was just not willing to accept that quality of life. And so for me, it really was like, this had to work or nothing. Like I was yeah. not willing to participate in that level of pain for the rest of my life. Um, and so now my passion is really just sharing about SIRS and letting people know it's an option for healing that I know I never thought I could have. That's me. <laughs> I'm kind of getting emotional thinking about it. Yeah. Um, so my, no, you're totally fine. I'm my sorry. friend and I were diagnosed at the same time and we were so grateful to have each other through this because it is, it is emotional. It is. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. No, no you're fine. Mm. Okay. So Judy Cho reached out to you. So let's maybe go from there then. Yeah. And so I'm wondering what your reaction to what was to that. So you were a little bit skeptical, obviously, because we're all skeptical in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But what made you think that this might be true? Like, what made you think that this might be the answer? So the first time I looked into it, um, a lot of the SERS information out there is very provider facing, which means it's highly technical. And I think when you have SERS, there's a symptom of brain fog. And so it's really hard to consume and retain information. Um, so when I looked into it, it was just like this mass of really scientific sounding information. It felt like they were gaslighting me, like they were making it sound so technical to convince me that it didn't convince me. Um, and then the second time that Judy reached out to me, 
I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to like seriously spend some time and energy learning about this to see if it really could be something that fits me. And that weekend I consumed like 50 hours of SIRS content. Cause I was like, I, I want to understand this. And um, I, I know you're a fan of Judy, so you can't let Judy down. <laughs> I know. I know. I felt so bad that I brushed her off the first time. Like, thank goodness she reached out to me again. I think that woman is incredible. Like she really, truly just wants to help people achieve root cause healing in the sense yeah. that she's a dog with a bone. She never let go. You know, she had these people, she was walking through gut protocols that weren't getting better. And she was like, there's something under this, like there's something more to this. And that's when she found out about SIRS. Yeah. That's, that's really heartening to hear because a lot of times I guess going through chronic illness, you do come across a lot of snake oil salesmen, as you, as you know, and you ended up end up you know sort of spending all your money and chasing your tail and stuff like that. So a lot of times, you know, you just automatically assume that someone's disingenuous, mm. you know, when they're a practitioner, and it's just not the case. So it's really heartening to hear that someone was willing to reach out to that level with you and try to help you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for the people that have found SIRS and found it to be a helpful solution for them. It's kind of like um, in the carnivore community, a lot of people find carnivore and it helps them a lot. And they're like, oh my gosh, I just want to tell everybody about this. But they mm -hmm. become kind of fanatical about it and mm -hmm. dogmatic about it in a way that I don't think is productive or helpful because, um, for example, I fully admit the lion diet is super helpful for people who are having a lot of histamine reactions. But for me, when I tried lion diet, I actually developed a histamine reaction to beef. Me and it's too. really it's really hard to say that in the community because they'll be like, What is wrong with you? Lion diet is the perfect diet. And it's like, well, not if you have an underlying health issue, it's not. Yeah, it, it depends on what your health issue is, right? Because some health issues it does really help a lot of people. And then there's I've talked to a lot of people where it just doesn't help. In fact, some people get worse from it. And I had those reactions as well. It seemed like my histamine was just getting worse over time. Like it was weird in the beginning. I had this honeymoon phase where everything was going right. And I was like, Oh, I felt really good. And, and then for whatever reason, I mean, it could be a, a million different issues. You know, I have theories on that Oxley dumping or whatever, um, or just, you know, I, I have like severe stomach issues that maybe just don't line up well with, you know, with, with certain types of meat, but, um, but I had that honeymoon phase, phase and it just gradually fell off the cliff. And I just kept getting worse and worse and worse. I didn't want to believe it. I just kept coasting along that direction, staying the course because I was like, well, I'm just detoxing. It's just something else. And to the point where I was like at the breaking point, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. But yeah, it can be very dogmatic, but, mm -hmm. and, and I don't want to discount that, that, that it can be very helpful for a lot of people as well. Right. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It really can. But I think for some of us, you know, we just have these underlying health issues and I don't think there's any shame in that. And I don't think carnivore fixes everything. I don't think it's this mm -hmm. unicorn diet that some people sell it to be. Yeah. I do think it's a powerful tool for many and it has been a powerful tool for me. Um, but I don't think there's any shame in looking for root cause healing either. Exactly. No, a hundred, hundred percent. Exactly. Why did you get to where you were to begin with? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's, should we get into what you did then to help yourself heal? Is that a good yeah. place to go from here? Okay. So yeah. tell me about it. What, what, what did JC start with? <laughs> So I follow the shoemaker protocol. It's the only clinically proven path to healing from SIRS. I am very much a nerd. And so if I don't see science to back it, I'm not going to do it. Um, and so it was really encouraging to me to see all of the evidence behind the shoemaker protocol. It's a 12 step protocol, but you don't have to do all the steps. A lot of them are indicated by your blood work and your symptoms. So the first step is removing yourself from exposure. So in my case, that was getting out of the moldy environment. The second step is taking binders. And these are very specific binders. They're not charcoal or clay. They're not these generic binders. They're specifically charged and they have a specific receptor site to help you remove the biotoxin. Um, I keep saying mold, that's mine, but there's a bunch of different ones. It can be like bacteria, certain um, vaccines, um, like the Gardasil vaccine, Lyme vaccine are a couple, um, Lyme disease in general, post-Lyme syndrome, uh, post-COVID, all of those things can be the biotoxin. Um, so once you remove yourself from exposure and you do the binders, then there's like nine different steps that are optional depending on your symptoms and your blood work. And then the final step is the step that I'm on now. It's called 
VIP spray. It's vasoactive intestinal peptide. It's a hormone created by the human body, but for people who have SIRS, it's really reduced. And so by doing the VIP spray, it actually works to correct the genetic expression that was incorrectly turned on by SIRS. So for me, this is really helping with a lot of my autoimmune symptoms. And a lot of that has resolved for me. Um, I'm, I would say I'm like 90% normal now. Like I still have moments where I'm like, ooh, that kind of hurts. Um, I have something called enthesis. It's inflammation of tendons and ligaments. Um, but other than that, I'm like back to normal. You're living um, a normal life. <laughs> yeah. The other big piece of healing from SIRS is limbic retraining. As you know, I'm not going to lecture you on this, but people who experience chronic illness, we just develop these incorrect neural pathways over time because we're suffering from so much all of the time. I but know. it can be really helpful to rewire those neural pathways. So that was another really important aspect of my healing personally. Is there one aspect of your treatment where you really started to see the gears change a lot? Like, was it right from the get-go with the binders or what, what do you think really, you know, what, what point did you really say, hmm, this is actually working? Yeah, a really big step for me was I started the binders, but I was still in the moldy environment. So I felt a little bit of benefit right off the bat. Um, but it wasn't until I removed myself from exposure and took the binders at the same time that I was like, whoa, like I can get my life back. I don't have to be in pain anymore. Wow. Okay. And what type of stuff did you do for limbic training? I'm very curious about that. Um, so I'm a really big proponent of, it's kind of like exercise, like the best exercise for you is going to be the exercise you like and enjoy and can stick to. I feel the same way about limbic retraining, like the limbic retraining that's going to work for an individual is what they respond to best. Um, so there's simple things you can do. Like, uh, for me, I started learning how to sing. Like I, I took singing lessons wow. and that was a really fun way to do limbic retraining. Um, but I also, uh, did more like mindful management, um, really sitting in gratitude. I didn't do like a specific program. It was more of a, I read this book called the joy plan and it's about pursuing joy and really it's limbic retraining because it rewires your brain to focus on the positive versus the negative. The joy plan. I loved it. It changed my life. It was like a night and day switch for me. Wow. Okay. I got to read that book. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think with my own healing journey, it's, it's just been a long time, you know, and I do see something's changing. It's just, I think you could relate to this, that when you've been chronically ill for so long and you see yourself regress sometimes, like it always seems like for me, it's like two steps forward, one, one step backward. Mm -hmm. And it's really disheartening when you take that step back, you know? And I always ha have wondered for myself, like, have I found all the pieces to the puzzle? Because I really de deep dive into limbic retraining. And um, Rabbi Rachel is the person who really turned me on to this. And that's why we're starting our community. I'm shamelessly plugging it right now, but uh, no. Um, but I'm wondering if there could be other pieces that I'm missing to the puzzle here, right? Because I do deal with pain on a daily basis as well. Um, I know I'm not in a moldy environment because we just had this house built. <laughs> but... Um, you know, there could be some other component that, that maybe I'm missing. And, you know, the last thing, as you mentioned before, like sometimes you're just so sick of going down rabbit holes. You know, I'm try I feel like I've tried hundreds of things to try and get my life back over the last few years. And this limbic training stuff has been the most helpful thing I've ever done, mm. you know, in terms of working on my brain to heal my gut, which I never focused on before. Um, and diet is very helpful and everything else, but for somebody who's stuck like me, what do you recommend? Do you recommend looking into Sears? Like what, what, what else can we do to, yeah. to, to, to try, you know, what else can we look into without having to spend $20,000 to actually heal from, from uh, chronic illness? Yeah, absolutely. I think the interesting thing about Sears is because the problem is you're unable to eliminate the biotoxin. Um, you could have been exposed to mold 20 years ago, 30 years ago. doesn't matter. We have people. Oh, who and I know saying, I was. Yeah. Oh. Um, so that's part of the diagnostic process. That's one thing I really like about SIRS is like there's really strict parameters about what it means to get diagnosed, what it means to get treated. 
Uh, but for the diagnosis, there's 37 symptoms associated with SIRS. And it's interesting because most SIRS people have like one or two like main symptoms. Like for me, it was definitely joint pain. For my friend Barbara, it was GI issues. And she's just had like chronic GI issues most of her adult life. Um, but the 37 symptoms are arranged in 13 clusters. And if you have eight of the 13 symptom clusters, you very likely have SIRS. There's also a vision test you can take. It's called the visual contrast sensitivity test at vcstest.com. You can take it for free or you can pay $15. If you kind of skip the $15 part, you can take it for free though. But the reason it works is because a, when you are exposed to a biotoxin, there's like direct nerve impact, but B, with chronic inflammatory response syndrome, you have so much inflammation just swirling throughout your body all the time that it actually clogs the tiny capillaries in the back of your eye. So it reduces your ability to see blurred lines. So they use this test not only to help diagnose, but also to track your progress through treatment. When you pass the VCS test is when they take you off the binders because they realize that your inflammation has gone down enough that you don't need to take the binders anymore. The other thing I really like about um, SIRS and the protocol in general is like, this is not a lifelong medication you have to be on. Typically SIRS takes 12 to 18 months to treat, but then you don't have to take medicines. So it's not like, I think coming from the carnivore community, people are very anti-pharmaceuticals and I don't blame them. So it's nice for me to know it's like a limited period of time that I have to be on these pills. It's not lifelong. And then following this, there's just some like ongoing re-exposure management you have to be aware of because if you do go into a moldy environment again, it's very likely to trigger SIRS again. Hmm. So a couple of things. Um, is it is it quite costly to go through this particular treatment? Is there ways you could go about that if it is costly that people could afford or? Yeah. So I, I, I really struggle with this because, um, you know, we talk about cost of treating chronic illness and it is expensive. When I was going through all my autoimmune stuff, I was spending like two, three grand a month in medical expenses. SIRS in its totality has been less than 10 grand for me. And I'm not sniffing my nose at that at all. I realize that is a huge amount of money for a lot of people. Um, I had to pace my treatment with my finances, but there are absolutely things you can do along the way to reduce costs. Um, my friend Barbara and I created a SIRS group. It's a supportive community of people healing from SIRS, but we all give like, you know, if you go to through this pharmacy for this medication, it's a lot less expensive. There's reduced blood work you can take. Some providers charge way less than others. So there's definitely... Um, I don't want to call it shortcuts because you're still going through the entire protocol, but there's ways to do it intelligently. So you spend as little money as possible. When you started the protocol, did you have any sort of die off reactions or any terrible reactions that, you know, maybe set you back a little bit? Did you sort of, and if, if that did happen, did you question whether or not this was right for you? Yeah, very interestingly, people who have SIRS, their immune functions aren't working correctly. So if they do try detox protocols that are not the Shoemaker protocol or SIRS targeted, they actually do have extreme reactions to any sort of detox, whether it's like gut healing or like uh, liver flushing, anything like that, or even charcoal and clay can cause reactions for SIRS people. It's basically you're trying to force your immune system to do something that it's not able to do through no fault of its own, but because of these biotoxins. So really, if you're not starting with the biotoxins, you're kind of setting yourself back. And there's a reason the protocol is laid out in the 12 steps that it's laid out in. You're not going to do GI healing until you actually remove the biotoxin in that way. It's kind of giving you the best bang for your buck. It's a domino effect. As you fix one thing, everything else becomes easier to fix. So I didn't have any die-off reactions like that because I was following the Shoemaker protocol and it is so well laid off, laid out. Um, but like anyone in any chronic illness journey, I did have setbacks along the way. And I think you just have to come to terms with the fact, and I'm really big about normalizing in your health journey. It's going to be that two steps forward, one step back thing, right? Because your body is a complex system living in a complex system. And so as you adapt to your environment and you're changing the inputs or the outputs, things are going to change for you. So it's totally normal to have baby steps back along the way, but as long as you're like progressing forward, the movement is forward, always forward. Um, I think it's still worth pursuing whatever protocol you're doing. So you would have moments where you would 
get set back a little, feel like you're set back a little bit. Right. And then you would just keep progressing with it. So you were in your mind, you really felt like this was the right way to go. Like no matter what, do you think yeah. that, do you think that also pursuing the treatment in, with full belief that it was going to work for you and, and really diving into it made you that much more successful with it? Yeah. I do think you have to ha believe that you will heal. Um, and I think that's a big piece of limbic retraining is you have to have that belief that things can be better. Things will be better for you and your body does want to heal and it is healing all of the time. If you think about it, our skin cells regenerate daily and that's what our body wants to do. It wants to regenerate. It wants to heal. We just have to give it the tools to let it, let it happen the way it needs to. Yeah. So what, how, how big of a component was the limbic retraining for you and your healing? Do you think it was a major component to healing? Yes. Um, I was not. So with SIRS, a lot of the, uh, a big piece of it is depression or anxiety or mental health issues. It messes with your dopamine receptors. And we know that that can cause mental health issues. Um, so for me, it wasn't until about um, nine months into the SIRS protocol that I was finally like, I am just sick of being a miserable bee all the time. Like I just felt like I was super reactive to things. I'd become really emotional. It felt like I was on a roller coaster all the time. So I was like, okay, I need to look into this limbic retraining thing. And I had this, um, just this feeling inside me that I needed to pursue things that made me happy. And so that's actually when I Googled like books about finding happiness and I found the joy plan. And that's what clicked for me. Prior to that, I had looked into DNRS and Gupta. And those are like two really big limbic retraining programs that are really well known. And they just didn't click for me. They were a little like um a little woo-woo, a little patronizing. Yeah. Oh, I felt yes. Like yeah. <laughs> Annie Hopper has that like, you know, yeah. very uh yeah, a little bit too uh Mr. Rogers type feel to it. Yeah. But for me, the joy plan was great because it was a mix of science and spirituality that I really responded to. And that's why I say like with the limbic retraining, it's really about finding the format that will work well for you. Okay. So you think that just finding some joy again in your life really helped with your mental health and that that probably played at least some role in your healing as well, right? Oh, absolutely. It was like a flip switch, Scott. It was like, I read that book and the next day I was like a different person. Like my mindset was completely turned around. Um, I had gone from like a space of extreme negativity and just emotional turmoil. And the, the next day after reading, I read really quickly. The next day after reading the book, I was just like joyful again. And I, I felt like I could help other people because up until then I felt a lot of resistance to it. Um, just in wanting to help other people, like I felt really bitter towards people and angry all of the time. Yeah. And then by doing the joy plan and the limbic retraining, it really helped me to be like, okay, I was able to heal from SIRS. I want this for everyone else. Like, I just want to share about this. I want other people to know that this could be an option for them um, and provide resources to people too. Yeah. You know, we've talked about this before in other videos and, and I know that dealing with chronic illness can be so tough and it, it really does put you in a negative spot and it makes you feel sort of negative towards people who are doing so well sometimes. And that we mm -hmm. talked about toxic positivity and I don't feel that with you, you know, there isn't that, I don't feel like with you, it's like, I, when I'm a, like just talking to you right now, I'm like, I want on board with the JC train. You know, this is really inspiring to me because I know that you're in such a difficult spot. And I know that some people who are watching this might be thinking, oh, she's not nearly as sick as I am. You know, she doesn't know what it's like and, and this and that kind of thing. And I could tell you guys that that's just not the case. You know, this is like a real success story. And I know that JC has had it really hard. And uh, this just means a lot to me that you've, you're at this point now. How long has it been since you've been feeling better? So when I left the moldy environment, it was July of 2022. And when we're recording this, it's February of 2023. Um, and I would say up until this point, I've been majorly pain-free. 
in January of this year is when I read the joy plan. So the mindset shift happened for me. And then just starting this month, I started the VIP spray, which is when I have felt normal. So like up until this point, I was pain-free. Then I fixed my mindset and now I'm feeling like quote unquote normal again. And I just feel so lucky and so blessed to have found out about SIRS and been able to pursue treatment because I totally recognize what a privilege that is. Okay. So I'm assuming it, it probably feels like you have a new lease on life right now, seeing as how you're in such a dark spot. You talked about suicide and everything last year. And um, I knew you were in a bad place. I didn't know it was that bad, you know, but so, so what do you, what do you want to do with your life now, JC? Obviously you want to help people, but what, what can we see? I could just see such amazing things and energy coming from you in the future. Yeah. I think um, the biggest thing for me is like, not wanting to waste a moment, you know, like I feel, I, I do feel blessed and very grateful to have this second chance at living my life. And I don't want to spend it wasted on worrying about what other people think about me or, you know, other people's opinions. I just want to heal and I want other people to heal and I want them to feel their best. And that's really all all that I want to do right now. Um, the other aspect is, uh, I think we originally started talking right before I did my bikini competition or after, and that was before I became really sick. And so it's been really amazing to like realize that now that's an option on the table for me again is working out and weightlifting. And I don't want to waste this opportunity either. And I want to celebrate my body with joyful movement. And I think those are my two big things. It's just a quiet, simple life, drama free, helping people heal and working out. Well, that, that sounds like a very purposeful life as well. So, um, so I'm, I'm so happy for you, JC. Is there anything else you want to share? I know that you have your own service community. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it's called the SERS Group. You can find us at thesersgroup.com. It's a supportive community of people who are healing from SERS. We also have a podcast, so we do like uh, shorter 10-minute long episodes um, where we talk about different topics related to the SERS community. Um, and then I have a series on Lady Carnivory if you kind of want to take a deeper dive into SERS and how to find a practitioner and get diagnosed and what the protocol is like. Um, I tried to make those videos, the content I would have needed when I started SERS and I was like, everything is provider facing and feels really gaslighty. Um, so I've been really working to create that content. I wish I could have had. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you so much for coming on today, JC. I'm so happy for you. I'm going to link um, all of her stuff down below you guys need to subscribe to her channels as well she also has the meat fam on facebook which i'm part of which is great and uh i just i love this i'm so, just so happy for you right now i just see the glow in your eyes and uh it's, it's just great to see this so i really hope that um you know we're going to see a lot more of you in the future thank you for having me on scott okay. it's always my favorite <laughs>